Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Thank you for staying with us. Of course, we're going to end with a bang as Denelag Gray is in the studio with us. And today we're going to be looking at how we can create a niche for ourselves in the fashion and lifestyle industries. How are you doing today, Denelag? I'm great. And you ladies look absolutely lovely. Thank you. You look so amazing. amazing. Thank you. Well, you Thank always you. do anyway. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's <Please>. your field. <laughs> so Denelag Gray is also a TV presenter. And I'm yes. wondering how he feels being on the other side, being asked all the questions this time around. <laughs> well, first of all, I should add actors to that. I just no. like my first, um, my first uh, TV um, appearance. Amazing. I just wrapped shooting that in January. It's coming out in July. Amazing. But um, it feels really weird being on the other side because now I'm like, this is uncharted territory. I always have like a list of questions <laughs> I'm going to ask. Now I don't want to say anything stupid. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. I'm just kind of like nervous. No, <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. Oliver and I are good. We're nice and friendly. Yeah, well, right. you have to say you're nice and friendly. <laughs> ah. <laughs> But I love you guys. Oh, wow. Okay, so fashion and lifestyle. Where do we even begin? How have you managed to create a niche for yourself in the booming industries? Oh, my goodness. Um, first of all, thanks for saying <laughs> that. But um, I think, honestly, a lot of what I've done has not been uh, really clearly thought out. I always tell people, I have no idea what I'm doing half the time. But I think the general um, underlying ethos behind everything I've been able to accomplish has been... 100% authenticity and individuality. So um, just being myself, expressing my, my style in my own way, using my words, visuals, and um, really paying attention to detail has been, I think, what has kept me in this as long as it has. So, so yeah. for some of us, we started becoming self-aware in our teens. Right. You know, now you're a fashion icon on your Thank own. Thank you. <laughs> At what point did you become self-aware and start paying attention to details? And what would you say influenced your fashion style? Wow. Um, honestly, I think I've always kind of been aware of my style. Because my earliest memory is being three years old. I was wearing a white shirt with red dots on it and red trousers. And I was wearing like black sneakers and I was dancing to Michael Jackson. That's my earliest memory. Brilliant. Yeah, so, so I, I came in lit, you know. Yeah. But um, I've always paid attention to it, but I didn't do anything about it until I was about 19. Because I spent a lot of time, you know, trying to fit in. I'm like, oh, I don't want to look too conspicuous or too flamboyant. So I'll find outfits that I liked and those outfits will become like my uniform. I'll only wear those outfits, you know. So I wasn't really, but by the time I turned 19, I was very, um, Let's do it. Let's buy all the clothes we need to buy. Let's just go for it. And yeah, so that's how it yeah. Amazing. Now, take us down uh, a bit of an explanation with regards to fashion and lifestyle consultancy and right. exactly what you get up to in that regard. Okay, so I've actually been doing this since I, I moved back um, to Nigeria five years ago. But I didn't want to publicize it because I was building my TV career and my acting career and my writing and blogging, and I didn't want to get pigeonholed as, as, as a stylist. I mean, which is obviously a very, very great job to have, and there's a lot of great ones we For have in Nigeria. For multifaceted. Very. But um, what I do is a bit more intensive. I think because of my own um, style and personal individual journey, I want to create a lasting effect on my clients. So it's kind of like, you can't just say, oh, I want an outfit next week. I, 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 that's a stylist, that's great. But what I do is a bit more, okay, let's you know talk about your style. Let's enhance what's already there. Um, I'm going to take everything that you know and also fuse it with the um, more enhanced version of what I know and let's merge that together. So it's a bit more intensive and you know people end up feeling more confident. And I've seen it on people's faces. So it wasn't until now that I decided that I was confident enough in that to be like, all right, officially open to the public, you know? Yeah. Because yeah, I was doing it based on referrals and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. so when you go to the hospital, usually you go, before you see the doctor, you see the nurse that takes your vital signs, they check your blood pressure yeah. and everything. I believe that is, you have a process like that before you go into styling, definitely, you have to take details. Definitely, definitely. So I what mean, are the things that you look out for? What are the things you need to know in your clients before you decide what style, you know, to give to them or to help them with? I'm going to say something very, very interesting. I, I realized that the only reason why I can only really style men is because I'm way too aware of what's happening at any given point. So like with my male clients, I don't want to change them at all. I don't want to change who they are. Um, I don't want to impose my own um, personal style and or flamboyance or lack thereof on them either. So, but one reason why I can't style women is because I'm now not sure if I'm styling them based on um, what I feel they should look like as a man or what they really are. So I'm very careful with that. So I don't really touch it. 
because it's a very delicate um, um, thing for me. I, I, I'm a firm believer that all women should feel confidence whatever they wear. And I don't want to play with that. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, but for my male clients, it's really just about finding out their personal style, their go-tos, and being like, all right, this is in line with what you like, but it's better, you know? And it's more, and it make you feel more confident, so yeah. Amazing. Now, let's speak about lifestyle for a second. Some of our viewers may be watching this and thinking, but what exactly goes into the lifestyle industry? How is lifestyle an industry? So let's break it down. Um, I would say lifestyle is not just lifestyle. It's um, fine li um, living, fine dining, you know, things as that people don't really pay attention to, like interiors, just like really understanding how to live the best life you can possibly live, even with your abundant resources or not. Like, I'm afraid, I, I, I like being real, you know. I talk about affordability a lot, and I don't try and get people to sp spend obnoxiously. So, but there's a way that you can enhance every single aspect of your life. I mean, and why not, you know? Yeah. The world's hard enough. Might as well just give ourselves a break. Honestly. Yeah. And, <laughs> and there's nothing, and I think there's really nothing wrong with liking nice things or, you know, wanting that for yourself either. Or wanting the finer things in life. Right. Uh, and, and not, yeah. And sometimes the finer things in life are not even that expensive. Mm -hmm. It could be a lovely scent in your home. It could be, you know, a, a vacation that you didn't know was around you that you could, like, easily go to, like, next door in Ghana or in Tanzania. It's, a, it's just knowledge that is, that has not otherwise been um, shared with a lot of people because it's not that important, seemingly, but... Even if the small parts of your life are beautiful, then you feel that even in the big parts too, right? Give us an insight or a window into what the industry is like. It just seems that very recently people discovered fashion. Okay, maybe not fashion, but lifestyle. And all of a sudden we're having like an influx of a lot of people going into lifestyle, people doing interior decor, people doing travel and tourism and photography yeah. of all these things. And you're wondering, is the industry not saturated? The thing is, an industry like that can never be saturated because everything is based on different people's experiences and their own individual um, pers personas and personalities, each having its own following because people follow their tribe, you know? And lifestyle has always been there. It's just that because of social media and, um, you know, being able to make a buck of sharing knowledge, it has become a viable f form of... People are essentially getting paid to be themselves. Yeah. I actually saw Clinical. a quote once that was like, we all see life through different colored spectacles. Yeah. So everyone has like their own different take. Their own take on different things. Yeah. yeah. So based on that, for any viewers out there that are thinking of starting a lifestyle brand, what three tips would you give? Ooh, I, I, almost, just, I almost just like swore right now. <laughs> know your stuff. Know your stuff. Um, also, I would say be, pay attention to detail and understand quality. And the very last important thing is be yourself. Be yourself. Be fearless. Be yourself. And um, yeah, so individuality, attention to detail, and knowledge. You can never learn enough. Keep learning. Absolutely. Yeah. How would you describe your style? My personal style, oof. Um, I think my style is. I see, it doesn't really have a definition. I mean, I, I, I can't. You can't really define yourself, right? Can you adequately? You no. can be like, I'm just one thing. Mm. That, that's my style. I and think. what influences your style? My, my mood. Okay. How I wake up feeling, or how I'm feeling in the instance that I pick something is what my style is. Okay, so how are you feeling today? <laughs> pretty, pretty summery, you know? I mean, I can yeah. see that going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, you know what I'm you. Ask, asking with this is, would you? Okay, this is a very serious question because you're in the entertainment industry, and right. unfortunately, the industry is very vain. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people sacrifice comfort on the altar of fashion. People right. wear things that are not comfortable right. because it's what's in trend. Right. Would you find yourself in such a situation? Hundred percent, all the time. As a matter of fact, <laughs> no, the no, other day... No, not in trend, but sorry, carry on. What were you no, saying? I was just going to say that the other day, someone actually tweeted at you and said something like, I follow you and everything on social media, yeah. but please, can I request that? Just don't show your don't, chest don't show too your much. Chest. Can you imagine? Yeah, somebody DM me that. But I, there have been times when I want to wear an outfit that has a certain vibe to it because I felt like dressing like a soldier with a belted jacket. And that belt is tight. It feels very uncomfortable, but... <laughs> The thing is, I think carrying myself that way and knowing that, man, I put this together. Because for me, like, when I put an outfit together, it feels like I, I created something. 
So like, it's kind of like my baby for however many hours I wear it. So I'm like, yeah, I did this. I can't breathe, but it's great, you know? <laughs> you know, it's cool. I mean, like last week, Friday, I, I wore um, a white suit and I with a brown belted thing. I did like this extremely obnoxious video on it. I don't know if you saw it. And, and I was like, yeah, I did that. that. That was great. I felt really proud of myself for like five hours. <laughs> then I couldn't eat. Was that the video that I, um, I yes. think I messaged you, actually? You I messaged Denola and I was like, I think I'm going to steal your idea on this one. Yeah. It was such a cool video. It was so dramatic for no reason. See, I, and if you just go with it, then you just have fun with it, honestly. And it's fun, you know? Until you can't eat. And you're I like, know, oh, right? <laughs> so everybody has this um, style icon or this person they look up to. And right. they think, oh, I'd like to be associated with this kind of style. Who are your top three style icons? Okay, top Oof. two or three. And I'm going to ask you, Leila. Like We're all going to have to say us. That's next to impossible to say. Because, I mean, I draw inspiration from both men and women. So I would say anyone who um, isn't afraid to play with um, different articles of clothing and style. Um, but I would say, okay, I'll just give it a name. Somebody that embodies what I really would like to be as a grown man. Um, Tom Ford. His attention to detail is precise. He knows fine living. He knows visual creation. He's just the perfect, his, his style personified in all aspects of what he does. So yeah, that's him. Amazing. You know what I say? Okay, I would, okay, three top, I'll do male and I'll do female because I also draw inspiration from both sides. I yeah. would say number one is Travis Scott. I'm sorry, the way he dresses is so nice and I love it, but actually I take that back. Number zero in that case is ASAP Rocky. ASAP <laughs> Rocky is oh, yeah. my number zero. Like yeah. he's my best dressed yeah. male. I love the way Wizkid dresses as well. I think Wizkid's mm -hmm. sense of style is so unique. And to be honest with you, without trying to blow anyone's trumpet in the room, Den Allegri is my third when oh, it comes to men. Like for oh, sure. And that is all in no particular thank order you. because those are people whose like pages I go to when I want to pull like some cool looks out and get some inspiration. Now, yeah. female wise, if I don't say Rihanna as my number one, I'm lying. Why did you feel so, that girl? I'll say Rihanna too. <laughs> Honestly, I am proud to say Rihanna is my number one when it comes to females. I'd say number two. I'd have to think, but I really like the way in which um, there is a South African TV host. Her name is Ayanda, um, Ayanda Tabete, okay. and I love the way that she dresses. I think she's really cool. But if I'm going for a company, I'll move away from females for a second. If I'm going for like a house of brands, Gucci. I'm sorry. Yeah? I'm Gucci sorry. gang. Okay. Gucci gang, Gucci gang. I'm Gucci not gang. even part of the Gucci gang right now. I would say for me, I'm a bit boring sometimes, so I would go for Olivia Pope. I really like the mm. class that she emits. That's um, Kerry, Kerry, Kerry Washington. Washington yeah. um, I like the Queen of Jordan. I, I can't Queen explain. Rania? Yes. Yeah, she's I can't explain what it is about her. She, she smells of class. Mm -hmm. I love her. Then I love Rihanna. I like the fact that Rihanna is not the typical, you know, she, she veers off the natural, she off does. the normal. She does. However, I to bring it back to Nigeria, my own Nigerian Rihanna, as much as people have criticized to me, I love her. Yeah. Ooh, I love Simi I so yeah. much because I feel that Simi is one of the people that is just, she's not afraid to be herself. Yeah. So she, you she attack Simi's things. braids and tell her, why did you wear the braids for two weeks? She'll tell you, ah, give me money to do another one. I like the fact that she doesn't yeah. try yeah. to be anybody's, yeah. anybody yeah. else's. Um, she's just like, man, Absolutely. I want to do myself. Whatever you want to do is fine. And you know who else dresses really well? Adekunle Gold. And they're together. Yeah. Yes. So they're a very well-dressed yes. couple. Wow, they're together. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, oh wow. Tea. Oh, <laughs> Layla just feels so much. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but thank no. you so much for joining us. No, thanks Dana. for having me, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, really Danala. Honestly, it's yeah. been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.